Welcome back to Pearl Never Counselor of Sierra. This is CLE Language Arts 600, Book 2. It's raw footage right from the classroom. Hope you enjoy. Okay, Language Arts 6, Lesson 7. Some review, first of all. What is the adverb in the sentence? Dad's opinion of my motives was uncomfortably accurate. Uncomfortably. uncomfortably what word is it modifying? Accurate. Accurate. Hey, you're good. The warning came too late to make a difference. Too. Too, and that's modifying? Late. Late, saying how late. Great. All right. The new lesson is summarizing a story. I'm going to read you a story. When the story, when we're finished reading the story, we're going to put in one sentence, the best we can say, what the main idea of that story was. And then we're going to answer these questions. And then from there, if we make notes and answer these questions, you could write a summary of a story. A summary is just a small paragraph to give you an idea of what this book is about. Uh, you might find the summary of a book sometimes on the back. There will just be a little summary of what the book actually means. Um, so that's what you're doing. You're taking a story in today's lesson, just a story, and putting it maybe into a paragraph about that long instead. So I'll read you this story. Whoa, Judy. Harley jumped up from the supper table and gave his younger brother a nudge. How about hitching up my horse for me while I go upstairs and change? It's past seven already. And Pollyanna and I are supposed to be at Zook's by eight o'clock evening to sing for Sarah. She came home from the hospital today. Be a pal and harness Judy and hitch her up, would you? Sure, Harley, answered Vernon, pushing aside his jet black hair. He reached at the same time for his straw hat hanging on a nail beside the washstand. The screen door slammed behind him as Vernon made quick steps toward the barn. Once inside, he hunted for the curry comb and brush. He had seen four-year-old William playing with them doing, during chore time, grooming Tabby, their multicolored cat, pretending she was his Indian pinto. But where are they now, Vernon wondered, hard telling what Wilbur has done with them. He tossed aside a gunny sack that was lying in the window ledge, but no curry comb and brush appeared. Ah, said Vernon at last, there's the handle of the curry comb sticking out from behind that milking stool. He reached down to pick it up. The brush was there, too. Judy had finished eating her oats and hay and was standing very relaxed in her stall, resting her weight on three feet. Vernon tapped her gently with a curry comb. She only had three feet? Uh, probably she's standing there just with one foot up a little bit. Resting. Vernon tapped her gently with a curry comb. She moved to one side so that he could come in next to her. When he had finished grooming her left side, he ducked under her head to start on the other side. Judy tore back on the neck rope. She was frightened. Whoa, girl, Vernon called, talked calmly to her. The grooming was soon finished. Vernon returned the curry comb and brush to their proper place, but the horse put the horse collar on his left shoulder and carried the heavy harness, harness up close to Judy. Since Vernon was short for his age, it was difficult for him to harness a horse. On the second swing, he managed to place the harness in a reasonably correct position on the horse's back. Being a nervous horse by nature, Judy shook slightly when the harness landed on her back. In a few minutes, the buckles were all fastened, and Vernon led the sorrel mare out to the water trough. While the horse was drinking, Vernon spied little Wilbur, barely sticking his head out of the buggy. The little boy knew he could not go along, but it was fun pretending. His trip would be over once the buggy reached the end of the short lane. There he would have to get off. But for a little boy, even a short ride was better than none. Just as Vernon was leading Ju Judy under the shafts, Pollyanna came out of the house, carrying some songbooks in her hands. She climbed aboard the waiting buggy and teasingly said to Wilbur, What song are you going to lead tonight? The youngest member of the Miller family did not answer. He was too busy taking the lines from Vernon and feeling the wide, soft leather in his small hands. Everything was ready. Only Harley wasn't there. He was standing before the kitchen mirror, taking a last-minute swipe at his wavy hair. It was not long, however, before he had his hat and coat and was outside, too. Thanks, Vernon, he said to his brother as he got on the buggy. You saved me a good ten minutes. I'll buy you a comb next time we go to town to grind. Vernon stepped back as Harley pulled on the right line, turning the horse toward the lane. Oh, no, Vernon, grasped Harley. Why didn't you take the halter off before putting on Judy's bridle? His eyes had been quick to notice this when the horse had swung her head to the right, heading for the lane. I thought you were in such a hurry, was the best answer Vernon could muster. Hurry or no hurry, said Harley, hopping down from the buggy. I refuse to drive a horse with its halter on. It looks so stupid, the rope that they lead the horse with. So he went and put it in the buggy with this lead rope still on it. His fingers began unloosening the thin strap that held the bridle in place. Pollyanna called out, 
Harley, aren't you going to take Judy on the shafts before you remove the bridle? She's a little jumpy and might. But before Pollyanna could finish speaking, Harley, in his haste, had the bridle off. With no blinders to block her vision, Judy now had a full view of everything around her. What was that strange black object looming up behind her? She stared at the top buggy as if it were a dark monster. The sight of this unknown object frightened her. She wanted to get away from it. She started to run. There was no bit in the horse's mouth. It was impossible for the boys to stop the runaway. Harley grabbed the halter and tried desperately to guide the horse to a fence corner. But Judy picked him off his feet and swung him aside like a football player shaking off a tackler. Pollyanna, still sitting in the buggy with Wilbur, screamed. This scared the horse all the more. Judy raced through the yard and round the oak tree. But the buggy did not make the sharp turn and tipped over on its side. Judy ran all the harder now, dragging the load of screams through a flower bed, across the lawn, and over the rough gravel driveway. The commotion brought the miller's parents and other children running out of the house. They arrived on the scene just in time to see Judy break loose from the shafts, gallop 50 more feet, and stand near the fence, breathing heavily. Pollyanna and Wilbur crawled from the overturned buggy, shedding an abundance of tears. Little Wilbur was clutching his left arm. No one from the Millers went to Zooks that evening. The buggy was a wreck. Pollyanna was bumped and bruised. Wilbur's arm was badly oh, yeah. the girl. Wilbur's arm was badly sprained, and the horse was exhausted. But in the worst condition of all was Harley. He sadly realized that his thoughtless hurrying had caused so much damage and pain. Mr. Miller was careful not to be too stern with Harley, for he knew how much the boy was suffering. With a gentle, fatherly voice, he looked at his oldest boy and said, There's an old but wise saying that haste makes waste. I think, son, tonight you learned that lesson. So... What in one sentence is the story about? About the Millers. The children went to go sing for an old woman that was in the hospital. And <coughs> they had to go with the horse. And when the guy hitched it, it didn't, it didn't take off that halter thing. Okay, that's a little more than a sentence. Can we just make it one sentence? The Millers wanted to go to sing. And the horse oh, and broke away and hit Okay, let's not even talk about them going to sing. Okay, we do need to talk about them going to sing. Let's say the Millers hurried too fast to get ready to go to sing. And, and we're not able to in the end. Even that, maybe. Yeah, only that. That might be fine, just for one sentence. Now we're going to build a whole paragraph. So we'll start asking the questions of where did it happen? At home. Okay, the story happened at home. Who? Uh, the boys, the little boy, the older boy. Good. Do you know any names? Can you remember any? Pollyanna. Pollyanna's the girl. Who was the one who put the harness on the horse? <laughs> <laughs> no, Vernon, I think. And Harley was the older Harley. one who told Vernon to go do it. So then Harley... Okay, so what did he do? So let's call Vernon the main character. Yeah. What did he do? Uh, he put the thing on the horse. But he left the halter on the horse when he put it in the straps. And that was a bad thing. Harley, as him as a main character, what did he do? He was changing and making his hair. He tried to, okay, he was making his hair out, but then he tried to take that halter. harness off the halter, off of the horse, without taking it out of the buggy straps and tying it up. And that's whenever it got loose. So both boys were hurrying. Vernon hurried and left the halter on. And then when Harley tried to take the halter off, he didn't and the halter doesn't like stop the horse from running, right? Well, you can, but it said it swung him around. The horse was much stronger than he was, because the horse decided to run. If you think of it, a big cow or a big horse, a man can lead it. But if it really decides to do what it's going to do, you can't stop it. One person, not really. The weird is too small. Um, what problems were there? The, the horse ran away. The horse ran away. He left the halter the on. Tip. He didn't tie it up, tie up the horse before he tried taking the halter off. How were they solved? They didn't really solve it. <laughs> they didn't really solve it. Everything fell apart. <laughs> they weren't able to go to the thing. Hopefully they learned to be more careful and more slow next time. So then we could write an entire paragraph. And the paragraph would be something like this. The very first sentence is that main summary sentence we have. 
The Millers wanted to go sing for someone, but in their haste, they made waste. They made waste. That would work. And then you could say, Harvey and Vernon tried to hitch the horse to the buggy, but they did not do carefully enough. Do it carefully enough. Vernon left the halter on the horse, and then Harvey tried to take the halter off the horse without fastening the, without tying up the horse in the right way, so it couldn't run away. Um, the horse got scared. When the blinders came off, the horse ran away. How was it solved? The buggy wrecked. The boys have to work hurt arms. Everyone is sad. No one gets to go to the party or to the singing. Tonight. That would be maybe a paragraph, and it would just summarize this whole story. So that's the thought of what you're supposed to do. Uh, do close your book whenever you're writing your summary. Um, turn the page. Good, turn the page. Make sure you can't see it. That keeps you from going back and copying. And make sure that the words you write are your own words. Is that the right paragraph? Yeah.